Hello traders and users of trade ideas. Been getting a few questions come through about the optimization process when we backtest using trade ideas. So just wanted to drop a little video here showcasing that functionality. So take note of the alert window that I have in my layout here. Positive VWAP divergence, 3% looking for a nice short. So we're looking for stocks that have run up 3% or greater from their VWAP in hopes of getting that little pullback. So let's first take a look at the configuration of the unoptimized strategy. You can see here positive VWAP divergence, three, so it could be higher. Minimum price, five, max 50. And I'm starting with some of my favorite filters. Volume in the five minute period has to be two and a half times normal or 250%. Relative volume has to be at least 1.7 to start the show. So what we're gonna do here is run the back test in case you don't know how to get to the back tester, we right click in the alert window and we just say, let's back test this strategy. So now we have our panel pop up. Now the start time here, we're going to omit the first 15 minutes. There's a lot of noise there. Uh, we're going to scan until the close. Time to exit, just a good old generic 45 minutes here. And because this is more of an exploratory exercise, we're not going to worry about risk management. We just want to see what's out there, what to expect. And we will be back testing 40 trading days. So let's hit simulate cell and see what happens. Okay, all done. We just back tested 3,105 trades. Win rate, not too shabby for initial, uh, for an initial scan, 59.2%. So it appears that we have something to work with, but of course we would like average winner to be larger than average loser. And we definitely can't contend with something that's pumping out 3,105 trades over that 40 day period. It'd be too much to keep up with. So the goal is to A, reduce the number of trades, while B, improving our win uh, probability. But we got something good to work with here. This is the daily raw dump right here. So how do we get to the optimization process? Well, we just click on the optimization tab. Then you'll see four areas here. We can optimize by price, time of day, repeat offenders that come through the strategy in the form of symbols. But I always like to go to filters first. Now, we've all got our favorite filters and this gives you access to the entire filter set. So you can peruse this one at a time, but I always like to start in this case with 15 minute RSI. So we're gonna click on that. And then we're gonna shrink the, shrink the interval down to, let's just go, let's just go down to 10. And I think that's where we were to begin with. Maybe get a little bit more granular there. Okay, so obviously, this part up here, we can definitely do without because most of the profits are coming from this region here. So where my eyes go initially are to the results with the highest profit factor. So in other words, when minimum RSI, when 15 minute RSI has a min setting of 50 and a max of 59.99, that definitely looks like the playground we would like to be in. So I'm gonna set 15 minute RSI to a min of 50 we make it real easy for you to do that. All I have to do is right click here and say, set that min value to 50. And it's gonna pull it up, insert the value. So all we have to do is click okay and okay. And then we're gonna cap it at 59.99. And then what we're gonna do is rerun the scan and see how that one optimized change impacts it. Okay, and we definitely did some good there. We went from 3,105 trades to 780 while increasing our win percentage and actually creating a spread between average winner and loser and average winner is larger than average loser. So we're on the right path. Now what we're gonna do is go back in here. And how about, you know, correlation with the market or say the S&P for the day? Don't wanna be fighting the tape. So we're going to go to S&P change for the day. 
and already things are jumping out. Look at this real high profitable area right here. And we really pare down the number of trades. Hmm. Well, we could keep these guys. A lot of trades, a lot of cash, potential cash, I should say, and here as well. So I tell you what, we're going to set minimum value on S&P change to zero. And we're going to set max value to 1.19. And now we're going to give it another go. Now, looking a bit better. Okay, I think we've probably arrived. We could do a little bit more, but I mean, you know, watching this on a daily basis and keep in mind just because the optimization looks good, we still don't just jump into everything blindly. You know, we have to take everything one step at a time. And when you see that play come up, you have to ask yourself, okay, does it look good on the chart to me and is risk still in place? So please keep that in mind. I think we could shave this down a little bit more. So we're going to go back to the S&P. And let's see here. We're going to go ahead and Put that as a 10. The minimum at 10. And the maximum, we're going to cap it at 0.59. Just try to shave down the trade count a little bit more. And then give it one more spin here. All right, now we're down to a manageable amount of trades. Nice spread between winner and loser. You know, before that that change, we were still at 531. Now we're down to 300 over a 40 trading day period. So that way you're not going to be inundated with alerts. And we got a real good look on the daily. And that's how we optimize. So just with two simple optimizations there, was able to create something that might actually you know, be worth watching on the morrow. All right, that's it for now. Until we meet again, I'm Jamie. Y'all have a good one, and may your trades be green.